Aerial warfare places enormous demands on pilots and other air crew members in an arena where there is little or no margin for error. Combat air crews must have the mental sharpness, strength, and stamina needed to employ sophisticated aircraft and weapons in complex combat conditions, all while performing high-speed tactical maneuvers. No one is born to the combat air crew profession. The skills needed for success and survival in this business must be gained, honed, and perfected through extensive ongoing training. Since World War II, the Barry M. Goldwater Range in southwestern Arizona has been at the heart of America's system for training combat air crews. Decades later, its extensive land and airspace, year-round flying weather, natural open terrain, and realistic air combat simulations continue to make it one of the nation's most productive and irreplaceable ranges for preparing combat-ready air crews. The Goldwater Range is also nationally prized for its natural and cultural resources. Together with Oregon Pipe Cactus and Sonoran Desert National Monuments, Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge, and other public lands, it comprises the largest remaining tract of relatively unfragmented and natural Sonoran Desert in the United States. Luke Air Force Base manages the eastern side of the Goldwater Range and Marine Corps Air Station Yuma manages the western side. Recreational use of the range is allowed, but only where and when it does not interfere with military activities, raise security concerns, or expose the public to military use hazards. Most of the range is managed to conserve resources and to allow natural processes to shape its environment. Only recreation activities that do not conflict with cultural and natural resources management goals are allowed. Camping, hiking, photography, and hunting are examples of generally appropriate activities. All visitors must obtain a permit before they enter the Goldwater Range. The permit is used to alert visitors about safety requirements, natural and cultural resource protection rules, and other rules of conduct. The permit is valid for one year, starting July 1st, and expiring June 30th of the following year. Visitors must also obtain the Goldwater Range permit to enter the Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge, portions of Sonoran Desert National Monument, and BLM land south of Sentinel. These lands were all formerly part of the military range, and unexploded military ordnance may be encountered. This video focuses primarily on safety issues and rules of conduct that affect visitors to the Air Force-operated eastern side of the Goldwater Range. Anyone planning to visit the other areas covered by the permit must familiarize themselves with local conditions and visitor regulations. Your permit package includes additional information about Goldwater Range East and rules regulating your trip. The Goldwater Range East is used daily for air crew instruction in the use of aerial bombs, rockets, missiles, gunnery, and targeting lasers and other military training and operations. Access to these training areas is not permitted to prevent interference with training and to protect public safety. Visitors with a permit are allowed access to three areas of Goldwater Range East, including the Sauceda Mountains area, known as Area B, the Ajo Air Force Station area, and the Bender Spring area. Permit holders may access these areas either from State Route 85 at designated entry gates or from adjacent BLM lands on roads designated for public use. No public travel between these areas and East Tactical Range is allowed. Unexploded ordnance may be present in locations open to public use as a result of training from previous years. In fact, after decades of air combat training, no area of the range can be presumed to be free of unexploded ordnance, either on or under the ground surface. Some unexploded ordnance found on the range contains high explosives and can be lethal over a very large area. Other ordnance contains only a small explosive smoke charge to show where the round has struck, but these charges are still powerful enough to severely injure or kill a person nearby. Ordnance containing either high explosives or smoke charges are often indistinguishable. Some ordnance contain spring-loaded actuators that are powerful enough to cause serious injury. Not all ordnance looks like a typical bomb, rocket, cannon shell, or bullet. 
Illumination and self-defense flares, released from aircraft for example, bear no resemblance to these weapons, but when ignited, produce an intensely hot, blinding, dangerous form of combustion that cannot be extinguished. If you encounter ordnance, leave it alone. The fact that ordnance failed to detonate when it was dropped, or that it may have endured decades of exposure, must not be taken as evidence that it is not dangerous. Decades-old ordnance found on the range has been found to be fully functional and lethal. Visitors must assume that all military ordnance is dangerous and potentially deadly. Never handle, collect, or disturb military ordnance in any way. Collecting ordnance of any type from the Goldwater Range is a federal offense. At a minimum, you will lose your range visitation privileges. You could also be prosecuted. In addition to military ordnance hazards, visitors to the Goldwater Range also face the same environmental safety issues that may be encountered in other remote desert areas in the region. High temperatures and intense sunshine from May through September can be especially dangerous. Temperatures in excess of 115 degrees are common and shade is scarce. There are no sources of water on the Goldwater Range, so visitors must carry all the water that they will need. Winter daytime temperatures are often pleasant, but night temperatures can drop below freezing. Flash floods are infrequent, but potentially dangerous. Stay out of washes when rain threatens. Roads open to the public are unpaved and are seldom or never maintained. They may be impassable for days after heavy rains. A four-wheel drive vehicle is usually necessary for safe passage. There's no cell phone coverage in many areas of the range, so visitors need to be prepared to avoid problems and able to respond safely to dilemmas that do arise. The Goldwater Range, including those areas open to public use, has been traveled extensively in recent years by drug smugglers and illegal immigrants entering the United States from Mexico. In response, the Border Patrol has greatly increased its law enforcement activities on the range. Recreational visitors may encounter smugglers or immigrants. Immigrants in particular are often not prepared to cope with the rigors of the desert and may approach visitors for assistance. The key to any encounters with immigrants or smugglers is to avoid confrontations and to report the incident to law enforcement officials as soon as possible. Always be aware of your surroundings, lock vehicles, and be wary of individuals encountered in remote areas. Recreational visitors may be stopped and questioned by Border Patrol officers while on the range. You may be directed to avoid or leave areas of the range where law enforcement or search and rescue operations are in progress. Despite the hazards, a visit to the Goldwater Range can be rewarding, particularly to enjoy its exceptional natural setting. The areas open to public use in Goldwater Range East are characterized by craggy mountains and rich communities of cacti, desert trees, and shrubs. In turn, the varied terrain and diverse plant communities provide habitat for a rich assortment of desert wildlife species. Two endangered wildlife species, the Sonoran pronghorn and lesser long-nosed bat, occur on the Goldwater Range. Endangered and threatened species are protected by law. Do not approach, harass, or harm any protected animals or plants. Integrated natural and cultural resources management plans for the Goldwater Range place premiums on protecting and conserving resources. Public use must remain compatible with both the military mission of the range and these natural and cultural resource management goals. This means that public use must not jeopardize efforts to sustain the range ecosystem and to conserve or recover protected species, such as the Sonoran pronghorn. In addition, cultural resources on the Goldwater Range and other federal lands are protected by law, and it is illegal to remove, damage, or destroy them. Access to view cultural resource sites will be restricted in cases where visitation is causing or may cause harm to the resources. Rules of conduct have been established for public use of the Goldwater Range to help keep visitors safe and to minimize their impacts on sensitive resources. Certain rules that apply to Goldwater Range East are briefly highlighted here. Visitors should review their permit package for the complete set of up-to-date rules that will govern their trip. 
Failure to abide by the rules of conduct could result in the loss of your range visitation privileges or payment of fines. Vehicle use on roads designated and signed as open for public use is welcome, but off-road driving is prohibited throughout the Goldwater Range. Driving in wash bottoms that are not part of a designated road is also prohibited. Vehicles may be parked in open areas on the immediate road shoulder, where parking will not block other traffic or damage vegetation. A special use permit is required for a single party with 10 or more vehicles. Visitors may camp anywhere within areas open for overnight use, but vehicles must remain within 50 feet of a road open for public use. Camping is not allowed within one quarter mile of wildlife waters. Wildlife waters may not be used for bathing, washing, or drinking. Camping stays are limited to 14 consecutive days within a 28-day period. Visitors must carry out all their trash and garbage. Human waste should be buried at least six feet away from camping and use sites. Metal detectors may not be used on the range because of the risks posed by buried explosive ordnance. Entering mines is also prohibited. Many of these long abandoned structures are unstable and unsafe and may provide important habitat for bats. The collection of plants, rocks, or fossils is prohibited in Goldwater Range East. Dead and downed wood is important for wildlife. It can be gathered for on-range campfire use, but if supplies become depleted in high-use areas, restrictions could be implemented. Hunting is allowed on the Goldwater Range in accordance with state regulations administered by the Arizona Game and Fish Department. All members of a hunting party must carry a valid Goldwater Range entry permit in addition to their hunting license. Recreational target shooting is allowed in range areas that are open to public use as long as it is compatible with military use, public safety, and no resource protection issues arise. Firing between sunset and sunrise is not allowed. Shooters must not leave targets or any type of debris behind and must not use plants or other natural features as targets. Please, prepare for your Goldwater Range trip carefully so that it will be safe and enjoyable. Help us to take care of the range so that we may all continue to enjoy it. <laughs>